What is going on, everyone, and welcome to the Aspect Podcast Network, the home of the Valyrian Voice. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below to be the first to listen to our weekly reactions and other shows from the Aspect, including X-Men, Star Wars, Avatar The Last Airbender, and more. So, Hamed, let's start with you this time. What were some of your favorite moments from A Sun for a Sun? Man, um... There's there's so much like I I really thought this episode was like packed with content, mm-hmm. but um honestly for me I wouldn't call it exactly a moment but two characters really stood out for me, um Rhaenyra obviously and uh, and Aegon. Rhaenyra mm-hmm. she barely had any speaking lines she this had entire episode but one like line two like yeah no, like just one was line. it one she had... was it one yeah. Yeah, because like in the the behind the scenes thing after the episode, Ryan Condal, who's mm-hmm. one of the showrunners, he was talking about it. And he's like, "Yeah, Rhaenyra has one line in this episode, and it's the I want Aemon Targaryen." Yeah, yeah. She has one and, line and, 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 and a head nod, and that's like it. But she crushes it. She, you could feel her like all over the episode. You could feel her when she sees Eric's remains, like on the beach. The way that she mm-hmm. mourns, the way that she grieved, all those things. Even the one line that she spoke, it, you could feel like the emotion into it, and and I just thought her like the 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 acting was just fantastic. You could really feel like her presence, her shadow over this entire episode, mm-hmm. like over through through the course of the actions of everyone, and and it was just insane just to see this 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 episode, you know, and 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 see that this shows back, like you said before. Yeah, it's felt like it's been ten years, but at the same time, it, it's also it also feels like it hasn't been that long. But mm-hmm. you know, it just 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 coming back to it, it just felt so fantastic. I really liked, um, like you said before, like you know how we're pretty much they're easing us back into the fold, but they're also introducing new things. Like we saw the episode, this episode, you know, when Aegon was was meeting with the, um, you know, pretty much his 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 you know his. Uh, his subjects you can see oh, that this yeah. guy's like genuinely trying to help out and yes yeah. Otto hightower the, that the the, the the hand of the king he pretty mm-hmm. much you know essentially canceled all his like you know rulings <laughs> and all that stuff Dude, that was such a good scene honestly it's really it was so i just i did not see that i didn't see that coming like i, I was didn't... like okay like you know this guy's not what he was pretty much painted to be during season one pretty much just like uh a placeholder king yeah you know this guy he's he has a personality this guy is not like like an evil bastard like he's not an asshole he's just you know like he's just a kid like not but also at the same time like he's ahead of his years you know it's just mm-hmm. it's, it was just i really really enjoyed that and then yeah. i also enjoyed because i i genuinely hate the character i just love that we're starting to see Kristen cole's like true like his actual true colors Bro, I f- like I oh that. my god i hate that guy so much oh Easily, my straight god up the, straight up the worst character in the entire all of the dance of the dragons i hate this dude he oh my sucks god. so he, hard he pissed me off so much this episode <laughs> oh, like going man. back to season one where he was pretty much like essentially like slut shaming um right oh, the, the entire yeah. season oh, for him no. to genuinely do this exact same thing the same shit the, the first thing. episode of the season, <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god! Like, how much worse can you get as a person? Uh, yeah, he's terrible. I cannot stand that dude. He. Oh my god. Oh, uh, uh, just the uh, just trash. Just no, no positives for Kristen Cole. I mean, great character, like as far as like being a like, but oh, I, I absolutely hate him. Yeah, the the egg on point. I and this is something that I think. It, the show does has done and continues to do exceptionally well which is make the characters that are in the book much more three-dimensional and well-rounded than they are in the book because of the format of the book it being like a history as opposed to a normal like novel like we don't we never get like inner narration or like if we do get direct quotes from the characters they're normally like second or third hand accounts or like maybe they said this like on occasion there will be specific lines that we like quote unquote know were said because there will be someone like of reputable credibility that was there 
but like Mm -hmm. by and large like all of the scenes in the show basically like we don't get in the book in the same way and so the show continuously like adds dimension to these characters and like the last thing that i expected was to like care about Aegon at all or think that he was interesting beyond just being the worst and yeah he did a really fantastic job like the scene like the scene that you were talking about where he's hearing the petitions from his subjects and the small folks and like the his just first inclination to be like yeah we'll give this dude a sheep back like that seems like the right thing to do and then Otto, of course being the piece of shit that he is being yeah. like, like which like he sucks but also like i you see his point which is annoying but he's like well we can't do this we need them for you know x y and z which fair whatever but like yeah it was really cool seeing that side of Aegon and seeing him explored more in that way and then you of course get um laris clubfoot laris strong who is like kind of be manipulating him to his own ends and being like well you want to be a more strong king than your father was and whatnot which will obviously feed his worst impulses because uh Aegon, even though like in that scene with the the small folk he like had some good there he also is very uh not the most responsible uh king and very brash which we'll see more of going forward which will be interesting um but yeah i I did really like him um yeah rainero was just incredible the fact that she only had one line but still was like you were saying such a presence the scene with her and jace whenever jace returns to dragonstone uh yeah cried there that was one of the top like it's so good like he's just trying to you know be um proper and stuff at first and like you know reporting on how his trip went and like the what they're able to secure as far as like the war efforts and then yeah just them like breaking down was um profoundly emotional that was really great was. um uh, yes, yes it was it was the so, fact it, that jace was just trying to be like you know a loyal subject just trying to keep and, it together and like yeah and 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 his mother is just like looking at him and like she's essentially telling him like no you can be yourself like you know, i'm not your yeah. queen in this moment i'm your mother and i just love yeah the transition at that moment, literally no spoken lines, nothing like that. Just pure emotion. You know, so he, he 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 was barely keeping it together and she made him feel like safe. You know, you could you could you could show your emotion, you could break down, you could mourn, you could grieve. I just love that so much. Oh my god. I I thought the way that they handled Rainier in this episode was just uh, fantastic. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. It also it's really the what the fact that they had her like needing I liked Rainey's explanation too to Damon because um, whenever at the beginning of the episode when it's open and we just are like told we like hear that Rainier has been absent for days and it's because she's searching for whatever kind of proof she can possibly find to corroborate the fact that her son is dead which is so absolutely heartbreaking and traumatic and its own right and then like finding the little bit of that that she does as terrible but like it's a it's it's a really smart isn't necessarily the right word but like it's an understandable thing where like she needs to get through that before she can move on to the next stage of like what needs to be done now because like they are at war essentially like they're in the opening stages of war um which is just absolutely like wild to to think about I also, I love, not necessarily related to that, but the open of the episode, uh, we see Winterfell for the first time in this show, Mm -hmm. which was amazing. Also, I don't know if you clocked it, but the tune, the the track that we get there is, I believe it's the same, uh, some of the same musical cues from uh, Stay a Thousand Years. It's either that or, um, I can't remember the other track name, but from season eight of Game of Thrones um i like immediately like picked up on the the uh the tempo there and like the the music there but it's like so good the like longing and like great love seeing winterfell again we got to see winterfell we got to see the wall uh which was super cool and like it more um substantially manned which was interesting to see i like seeing how they differentiate like albeit slightly the way that the locations look in this show as compared to game of thrones since this is 
you know, like 170-ish years prior. Um, I think it's really cool how they do that. We get to see uh, Ice, the sword, Ned Stark's sword, because um, mm-hmm. it's being wielded by Kragen, which is always, like, cool uh, to see. But, yeah, like, seeing the wall again was awesome, uh, albeit brief. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really good. I think that the way that they're, that we spend time with all of these characters and seeing them more like slide into their roles more and more is um is really interesting and extremely well done